Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Follow me on Twitch to watch me stream, and like and subscribe for more time in a sequel next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Bastila Shan from Knights of the Old Republic, our first Jedi Guardian, if I'm not mistaken. Yellow lightsaber, double-sided, battle meditation. The extended universe has so many cool ideas that don't get touched on. If there's anyone at Disney listening, please give us more Old Republic era. Please? I'm the rose cat tumbling down in the city that we love. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to bolster allies and demoralize foes. Next, we need to see both sides of an issue. The side with a lightsaber and the side that also has a lightsaber. I'm talking about a double-bladed lightsaber. It's the cooler one. Finally, we need to enter our villain era and get some evil force powers. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma will be number one. Bastila is the best. Oh, and she has magic powers that use charisma too, I guess. Strength next, despite your weapon being literally literally light, its classification in Dungeons & Dragons is not. Dexterity after that, your armor is light, but not like your sword. There's some distinctions when you pivot Star Wars to D&D. Follow that up with intelligence to understand the Force and the Jedi Order's great rules. Constitution is a bit low. Bastila gets corrupted by the dark side, though that's probably a wisdom saving throw. So let's dump wisdom, because yeah, dark side, it gets in there. No shame, lightning's pretty cool. Bastila is a human, but a space human, so we'll go for custom lineage. It's actually just because I want plus two charisma and not plus one to two stats. For your feet, telekinetic boosts your charisma to 18, gives you the mage hand cantrip, letting you move objects weighing 10 pounds or less. Yours also gets to be invisible, and you can force a strength saving throw on creatures as a bonus action. Failing that, they're pushed back five feet. Honestly, when rolling up a Jedi, I recommend this or telepathic, then patch the other one up with cantrips. If you're a caster, who knows? Tickle round. Take acrobatics for your skill of choice and grab insight and religion from your background. Very important for a Jedi. We might fail the wisdom saving throws, but Bastila still has the big empathy. We'll kick things off as a paladin, letting us grab two skills from the paladin list like persuasion and intimidation, V. Revan's angel or devil. Divine sense lets you sense celestials, fiends, and undead a number of times equal to your charisma modifier per long rest. Sith do tend to love necromancy, so keep an eye out for it. Lay on hands lets you do a bit of minor force healing with a pool of hit points equal to five times your paladin level you can distribute as an action on one of your turns. Second level paladins really get the Jedi stuff going. First, grab the great weapon fighting fighting style to reroll ones and twos when you attack with a weapon you're holding two-handed. A double-bladed scimitar deals 2d4 slashing damage and can make a bonus action attack that deals a d4 of slashing damage. While the d4s aren't great on their own, great weapon fighting means you're super likely to get threes and fours, so it's going to be middling but very consistent damage. You also get paladin spells. First, bless. It gives three creatures Features a d4 to add to attack rolls and saving throws for the next minute, depending on your concentration. That's the battle meditation boost for your buddies. Divine Favor lets you get a consistent lightsaber, adding a d4 of radiant damage to your weapon attacks for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Shield of Faith adds two to a creature's AC for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Lots of concentration, but it can be helpful if you need to keep a party member guarded. Pretty standard sentinel stuff. Command forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they have to perform a simple task if you want to do a basic little mind trick. To add some more light to that saber, Divine and smite lets you add 2d8 radiant damage to a melee weapon tech and an extra d8 to fiends or undead. I'd recommend using divine favor for now if you want a lightsaber. Divine smite might be more damage on a single turn, but it's going to burn through your slots a lot more quickly and force you to use a vibro blade. That's so much less fun. You get another lightsaber option from the third level of paladin if you become a devotion paladin. One of their channel divinity options is sacred weapon, making your weapon magical, shine a bright light, and you get to add your charisma modifier to the attack rolls. Since we're more heavily invested in charisma than strength, this will all be hit like we didn't do that. Turn the Unholy forces a wisdom saving throw on fiends or undead, forcing them to dash away from you if they fail. Not as much of a Bastila move, though maybe you could call it battle meditation. I'd just use Sacred Weapon for a concentration free lightsaber. Four level paladins get an ability score improvement, cap off your charisma modifier for maximum force powers, and technically pretty good weapon skills with Sacred Weapon. Fifth level paladins get extra attack to make two attacks instead of one with your action, doubling the efficiency of Divine Favor if you're into that. We can also use some more protective spells here with aid, giving three creatures five extra HP for the next eight hours, which is real, honest-to-goodness stuff that can be healed. Warding Bond lets you form a special force connection with another creature, giving them plus one to their AC and saving
saving throws, and they'll resist all damage. That sounds a little busted, but it balances out when you also take all the damage they do. Bonds can be helpful, but it also means opening yourself up to pain. Sixth level paladins get Aura of Protection, letting creatures within 10 feet of you add your Charisma modifier to their saving throws, including you. That is a permanent concentration-free meditation boost. For another, seventh level devotion paladins get Aura of Devotion, making creatures within 10 feet of you immune to the charmed condition. Bastille's Fall to the Dark Side was just, uh, convincing arguments, I guess. Eighth level paladins get another ability score improvement, start working on that strength so your weapon attacks will be more useful even when you're not using sacred weapon, but also to be even better with the sacred weapon active. Ninth level paladins can learn third level spells, Spirit Shroud will get you a lightsaber and a negative battle meditation for your enemies all at once. Creatures within 10 feet of you have their movement speed reduced by 10 feet, they can't heal after you hit them with an attack, and you can add a d8 of radiant cold or necrotic damage to your attack rolls. I'd go for radiant, it is a lightsaber after all. Tenth level paladins get aura of courage, making your allies immune to frightening within 10 feet of you. With all these buffs, who wouldn't want to get close to Bastila? There are so many reasons she's the canon romance option. Eleventh level paladins get improved divine smite, adding a d8 of radiant damage to all of your weapon attacks, which is really good on a double-bladed scimitar. The free bonus action attack means 5d4 plus 3d8 from your damage die, and you can reroll the ones deuce. Really nice and really balanced. Twelfth level paladins get another ability score improvement, keep pushing that strength up before we start our descent into darkness. Also, Oathbreaker Paladin in the Dungeon Master's Guide can be taken later in the game if you talk to your DM and they approve it. That would be pretty rad for a Bastila build. There's nothing super specifically Bastila about it that we would get that we wouldn't get later in this build somewhere else, but it is something worth talking to your DM about it. I'm just not your DM, so I can't give you the go-ahead. We're gonna jump over to Sorcerer now, specifically a Divine Soul Sorcerer, so that we can also learn Cleric Spells. You're favored by the gods, letting you add 2d4 to a failed attack roll or saving throw once per short rest, call it being a fan favorite. For your cantrips, message lets you whisper to a creature within 120 feet of you, and they can whisper back to you for some force communication. Guidance and resistance give creatures a d4 to add to ability checks or saving throws respectively for more support. And light makes light so you can see in the dark with your bad custom lineage eyes, though it's also worth noting you can affix it to objects if you want to put it on your sword for the flavor. For first level spells, Bane forces a charisma saving throw on three creatures. Failing that, they have a d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws for up to a minute. It's the anti-bless. Since it's also concentration, you unfortunately can't have both up at once, but your paladin auras are providing plenty of concentration-free buffs to the party to account for your positive meditations. Detect magic lets you sense magical auras and the type of magic causing them for some force senses beyond the paladin's lich checker. Second get a font of magic with sorcery points you can use to recover spell slots for now and do cooler stuff with next level. You can also grab another spell like Witch Bolt for some Sith Lightning, making a ranged spell attack against a creature that deals 1d12 lightning damage, and you don't need to re-roll that on following turns. It just redoes 1d12 damage over and over again for a minute depending on your concentration as long as you stay within range. Third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you augment your spells with sorcery points. Not actually all that important, so let's just grab some good ones. Quickened Spell lets you cast a spell as a bonus action that normally takes an action if you want to buff and debuff a little bit faster. Heightened Spell gives a creature disadvantage on a saving throw against a spell you cast, like Old Person, which forces a Wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're paralyzed. Every melee attack against a paralyzed creature is a critical hit. So while there isn't really a spell for Force Choke, casting Old Person and then making three attacks per round to deal 10d4 plus 6d8 damage without even spending more spell slots on smites, eh, could choke out the competition pretty fast. Four level Sorcerers get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength for the best lightsaber technique you could have. You can also grab Detect Thoughts, letting you read surface level thoughts of creatures and probe deeper if they fail a wisdom saving throw. Obviously there are very practical uses of this, but I'd like to see if Revan likes you too, because I'm into shipping in my games. I want them to be less do violence to a dragon, and more like make all the pretty OCs smooch while occasionally doing a violence to a dragon, and then smooching on the dragon's corpse. Fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells. Vampiric Touch lets you make a melee spell attack that deals 3d6 necrotic damage on your turns, and you get to heal half of that for a nice little force drain. Sixth level holy solis get empowered healing, letting you spend a sorcery point to let a friend re-roll their healing die when they're healing nearby. You don't even need to be the person who's doing the healing, just someone needs to be healed, it's pretty neat. For this level spell, sending lets you send a message to a creature somewhere on the same plane as you, so you can always at least call Revan, check in. Seventh level sorcerers can learn fourth level spells, locate creature lets you use the force to find a creature of a vague type, or a specific creature within 1000 feet of you, and you'll know which direction they're moving 
moving in if they're moving. Force GPS tracking. It's not the most exciting, but it's a pretty standard fourth level spell. Our capstone is the eighth level of sorcerer for one last ability score improvement. Maybe just grab the tough feet for 40 extra HP at this point. Basilis and Frail, I just made constitution low for the saving throws. And also those aren't bad either now because you're a paladin. Let's talk about it. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're just great to be around. Plus five to every saving throw, support spells, and debuff spells to make sure that the team is doing better. You're also dealing really consistent damage, re-rolling lower numbers and getting an extra d8 of radiant damage on each hit and a third attack per round for free from your funky double-bladed scimitar. Finally, if you really need to, going dark side and using a force choke with divine smites is super busted, like nova smashing amounts of damage. For weaknesses, your perception's low, so you could have a Jedi assassin sneaking up on you. That's an assassin that targets Jedi, not assassins that are Jedi, to clarify. You're also pretty dependent on radiant damage, which can be resisted by a lot of holy enemies. Finally, your list is loaded with concentration and you can only have one option up at a time, so you're gonna have to pick and choose. Anytime I do the concentration thing as a con, eh, it's a really solid build. It's supportive, it's combat ready, it's everything you could possibly want. Bastula can succeed as a Jedi or a Sith, that's up to you. Just keep your guard up. Being fully corrupted could be a little mal icky. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to support the channel and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.